What's the worst thing you've said? And it turned out that person was standing right behind you. We were standing on Navy Pier in Chicago, looking out at all the ducks feeding. My friend begins pondering ducks, and proclaims man it would suck to have no arms. I just killed myself. Behind us was a woman with missing both her hands and forearms. Dang. What are the chances? I was 14 at my little sister's basketball game. This kid in my grade that had a social problem was also there. After talking to him for some time he said to the man in front of him so can I put my feet on you the man said no, but he did it anyway. The kid left a few seconds later, and I turned to the man and said sorry, the kid is retarded or something. That man? Turned out it was the kid's freaking dad. The rest of the game was honestly the most awkward experience of my life. A. As the parent of a retarded or something kid, don't worry about it. I take much bigger hits from other parents. Kids are at least honest about it and it doesn't hurt much at all when I get something like what you said from a kid. Well kind of a different way but same idea. At work I have a meeting that is supposed to be run by one person. But there is a guy who usually takes over and annoys everyone else in the meeting. I opened up a chat window with another friend in this meeting and sent him isn't supposed to be running this meeting, I think. Annoying dude. Just likes to hear himself talk. Well I don't get a response right away so I look at my friend. No reaction. I look at my screen again and I see that I actually sent the message to the guy running the meeting who has his laptop connected to the projector. I sweat bullets for the rest of the meeting. Luckily he never opened the flashing chat window for the remainder of the meeting. Worst 30 minutes ever. I was talking crap about one of my drill sergeants while I was in basic. He was right behind a pillar for a good 20-30 seconds of me calling him a mother sucker. You probably made his day. From what pop culture tells me, drill sergeants want to be hated. My boss made me stay an extra 7 hours and cancelled a bunch of plans because he forgot to schedule someone to finish the shift out. Then he gave me additional work to do during that time. Not the end of the world, but I was pretty pee. A co-worker came down the stairs and the first thing I said was hey co-worker. Guess what frick boss's name boss came down the stairs right after my co-worker. A co-worker escaped ASAP. Kept my job because I told boss I was frustrated, more than actually hating him. Boss said he understood. Everything went better than expected. You should have looked at him and said hey boss frick you and continue to do your job. When I was in high school, I found this email spoofing program in which I could write emails from any address I chose. I faked an email from one of my teachers and sent it to a girl I liked pretending I was him and just talking trash about myself. Saying how fat I was and I have sex with LOTR characters. It was really degrading. I sent the email without realizing I had a box check saying send receipt to self. I have no idea why this feature would exist, which in turn sent a copy to the email address it came from, effectively allowing the teacher to read the email I wrote. I also signed it with my real name at the bottom of the email. The next day the teacher approached me with a copy of the email and asked if I knew anything about this. He wondered if I had any enemies that would do this to me or if a friend tried to play a practical joke, because he knew I wasn't stupid enough to actually write my own name in this scathing email. I denied it and acted baffled, and was so embarrassed. He said that he was bringing the email to the IT department so they could track where it came from. I was so scared of them finding out and that I would be expelled. Nothing ever came of it though. Are the dreaded old IT technicians. You'd think they were FBI agents the way they always used to go on about them at my school. Early teenage years 14-15. When being rebellious against your parents was the cool thing to do. I was up in my room, on the phone with my girlfriend, and for some reason decided that trashing my mother in every nasty way possible would really impress the girl. I went on about how she was useless. Did nothing around the house, wasn't fun to be around, everything. A few minutes later, she finished coming up the stairs with my folded laundry, with tears streaming down her face. I didn't realize she'd been halfway up when I started my rant, and listened to the whole thing. She placed the laundry down on my bureau, and as she walked out she looked at me and said I'm sorry you feel the way you do, but I want you to know I love you no matter what. The only thing I could muster was I'm sorry, I'm... I'm just mad at you. I wasn't mad at her. There was no reason for what I did. I apologized properly later on. 
but it still eats at me to this day. Update. Per the suggestion of someone below, I called her up and asked her if she remembered this. She did. And she said she remembered it hurting her badly that day but that she eventually chalked it up to teenagers being teenagers. I apologized again anyway. We had a nice phone hug. Truly hurting your parents feelings as a child is the absolute worst freaking feeling in the whole world. At the 2003 London Film Festival I was sat waiting for the premiere of Lost in Translation to start. I had a totally awesome seat right in the middle just of the center aisle. There was a mic on the stage so we knew it was going to be introduced by somebody from the cast but we didn't know who. Sandra Hebron, curator of the festival gets up on stage and starts her we're very pleased to be bringing you this premiere, spiel and even more pleased to have some of the cast here to introduce the movie and hopefully stay to and answer some questions at the end and oh the whole time she is doing the intro. There are these two girls right behind me talking and giggling. I spin round and say shhhh. Halfway through the SHHHH I realize it's Scarlett Johansson and Sophia Coppola standing in the aisle, waiting to be invited onto the stage to introduce the movie. I died. They laughed. TL. DR. I told Scarlett Johansson and Sophia Coppola to SHHH. No one will ever believe you. The other day I was at a bar watching an all-female band and telling my friend how I had a thing for one of the girls on stage and how she makes accordion playing sexy. I turn around and her mom was right there and just kinda smirked at me. Cold or been worse. I cold or said I wish my dong was that accordion. Not exactly what you asked, but I'm intensely proud of the time back in 4th grade when this bully started talking trash about my mother in the lunchroom. My immediate impulse was to punch him in the face. But I had a moment of calm and quickly looked around and saw a teacher walking down our aisle, about to pass behind him. I said say that again to my face in a loud voice to get her attention, even though he'd said it to my face the first time, and he completely fell for it, saying it extra loud and slow with some extra profanity. He got marched straight to the principal's office, and I didn't even have to tattle. So proud. Handled like a boss. Went scuba diving in Montenegro, there were three people speaking Hungarian in the boat, one of whom was a middle aged lady with very long, sharp, painted fingernails. At some point I noticed the fingernails and told my BF in Romanian, look at those fingernails. If I were her husband I wouldn't let her touch my penis, I'd be too afraid she'd chop it off. One hour later, she was swimming toward our boat and very politely asked for her glasses, in Romanian. Talking about people in a language you think they don't understand just begs for this to happen. Not said, exactly, but when I was around 14 we were on the bus in front of the high school waiting for all the high school kids to get on. When my cousin gets on the bus and gives me this letter, it was from a guy a couple years older than me who I barely knew telling me how in love with me he was. I thought this was hilarious, since I had never even spoken to the guy and was laughing when I read the letter. Then I realized he was watching me from outside the bus, the look on his face still haunts me. No would have been just fine. I was something like 16 and was late to class, because the bus didn't arrive on time. I went into the classroom, having no idea that the teacher was around. Then I said to the mate so oh crap, I'm late, where's that old prick? Of course it turned out that the teacher was actually standing on the other side of the classroom, but somehow I didn't see him. Had an overweight co-worker who I didn't really like. Anyway, one day I was in the break room with 5 other people, when I say so and so must be on a seafood diet, because when he sees food he eats it. Two seconds later he walks in with a little can of Weight Watchers ravioli and the saddest look on his face, looks at me and just sits down. Everyone is dead quiet. He puts his food in the microwave and when he opens it, there were like 4 little raviolis. Ugh. I wish I could take that back. I was 15 and went to go see a movie with my boyfriend at the time. Lo and behold, my chemistry teacher was in the theater with her boyfriend. She was a fantastic teacher, but was sort of a bee. Anyway, while my then boyfriend and I were walking in the parking lot after the movie, I started talking about how much I hated her, which I really didn't. She was a great teacher, just bitchy. I heard a chuckle from behind me, and she was right there, like, within arm's reach. When we got into the car I curled up into a ball and tried to die. The other day, me and my friend were waiting in line at a fast food restaurant. 
Some girl in front of us is yelling something to her friend across the restaurant. And my friend starts imitating her behind her back for talals. He's imitating her for a couple seconds. When she turns around and says there's a mirror right in front of me. I can see everything you're doing. Oops. The only correct response to this is to apologize. Then as soon as she turns around keep imitating her like you had no understanding of the concept of mirrors. I was at a group of tables all pulled together at an Applebee's. Maybe 15 20 somethings. We had all just come from an event and most of us were just a friend of a friend so didn't really know each other. One girl overheard I worked at a camping past summers and asked if I knew a Lynn. I thought for a second and it clicked suddenly. When I remembered there was an older Lynn. Great lady. I was feeling really giddy from having such a good time and I just yell out with a big smile on my face oh. Lynn I held out my hands like I was holding some giant breasts. Lynn's short. It has a big chest. The girl that asked me goes oh yeah, that's my mom. That's not even bad. I'm sure I'd laugh if I was that girl. I've been on the other end of this. My little brother was getting a talk for having looked at internet p. Blamed it all on me saying I'd shown him p websites. Little bastard. Heard my dad warn him to not hang out with me too much. Comma heard my dad warn him to not hang out with me too much. Dang. Ouch. I was with a bunch of people in a hot tub, drunk of course, and I heard somebody say the name Gala in conversation. I immediately was like, Gala? Gala? What kind of weird name is that? I'd never name my kid Gala. My friend looked at me like a deer in headlights and whispered to me that Gala was right behind me. I slowly turned around, and she was staring at me. I remember looking at final grades posted on a wall in middle school, and one person had an average score of 5%, out of 100%. We didn't know who it was because they were coded by id number, but I said I bet it's Sarah's snicker snicker and she was literally standing right behind me and said hey. I tried to recover by saying I meant the other Sarah but there were no other Sarahs in that class. As opposed to those tricky out of 95 percentages. I was sitting in Burger King with a few friends. I kept hearing this low moaning and groaning behind me. I say, what is this a zombie invasion? I turn around and there is a mother staring at me, feeding her mentally disabled child some french fries. I feel bad that this is the only comment in this thread that made me laugh out loud. Not exactly what you're looking for, but this is a story that my parents still love to tell. More than 10 years after the fact. I was maybe 16 and my brother 13. My parents were out shopping and we were in the basement playing video games. Me on PlayStation. Him on computer. Somehow we got into an argument about who hogs what system. We started cussing each other out for a solid 10 minutes why do you play blah blah all the freaking time stfu you little crap. We don't even stop playing. Just continue on our respective rants. Eventually, we stop. Then a few seconds later we hear our dad call down into the basement hey guys, it's good to know you guys can cuss properly, now go cuss the freaking grass. They had gotten home without us knowing and just stood at the stop of the steps listening and laughing for nearly the whole argument. TL, DR, brother and I cussed each other out, troll dad listened, laughed, told us to cut the freaking grass. Sometimes I wish I had a brother. I wasn't saying it about someone in particular, and it wasn't intentional, but it was still pretty awful. I was walking into the room in which I work, and on walking into the room, I caught a strong whiff of fruity perfume. On walking into the room, I loudly exclaimed, something smells like watermelon in here. Then I turned around to see two temps punching in. They were both black, and were giving me the stinky. I was just, like, I if anyone needs me. I'll be crawling into a hole and dying of embarrassment. In my office, fake racism is what passes for humor. Ah, don't listen to that guy, that freaking Swedish meatball. The Swedes are the Mexicans of Europe, ick now, stuff along that line. So one day, we get a call from a guy named Stan, trying to collect some money. He's on hold, and I come out with, tell Big Nose to hold onto his yarmulke while I figure out what's going on. One of my co-workers looks at me in horror, before pulling me aside and whispering, Dude, June, the little old lady we hired to do the books yesterday, she's Jewish. The blood drained from my face in horror, as much of an butthole as I may be, 
I'm actually not a racist and I don't like to be that guy. I found out later she asked my co-worker, does he really hate Jews? I ended up apologizing and telling her it was in bad taste and that I had no racist feelings at all. She accepted. And nowadays, she tells me to get my smelly French butt out of her office. So I guess she fits in now. When I was in junior high I was passing on gossip about how this guy, couldn't remember his name, ran out of an earlier class because he couldn't hold his bladder anymore and was pee himself all the way down the hall. I struggled with the name for a moment, and then remembered it, and realized he was sitting two rows over in the same class I was in. I felt like an butt because I was gossiping trying to make myself look cool. The look he gave me was shaming, and I have never forgotten. I've never ceased to regret that day. At a party at my sister's house with my friends, we were at the balcony, drinking, talking, and I had my back to the door which led inside, and because I'm handicapped and in a wheelchair I had no way of turning around. My sister and her friend, who was extremely hot, and who I had a crush on were supposed to be there but as usual were late. My friends knew I had a crush on her, and somehow out of nowhere, they started asking questions about her. So, Lily is coming. Are you nervous and I said oh don't even ask, I want her so much. Then Lily kissed me on the cheek, right at that moment. I am severely handicapped, so I knew it would never work, but let me tell you, one of the best days of my life. Nice story but, worst thing is the question, that was pretty sweet. Reading through this thread, I see that many of you are filled with regret and guilt for causing pain in others. So, a note for all the people who were caught saying mean things while young. Hey, you were an idiot back then. You didn't said many stupid things. Sometimes you were being mean on purpose. Sometimes it was an accident. Either way, the fact that you regret those things now shows that you have grown. You know better. Make amends if you can. If you lost touch with or didn't even know the person you hurt, then the best you can do now is try to be patient with those callow youths who are following in your angry, spiteful footsteps, and help them learn compassion and respect for others. TL. DR. You kids get off my freaking lawn. When I was about 6 or 7 my father kept telling me how Italy was a place across the sea inhabited by filthy pig men who stunk and never showered. I parroted the opinion to my Italian friends in our 80% Italian town. I literally thought Italy was a place inhabited by bipedal boars who stunk so bad they had cartoon stink rays floating off them. I was sitting in the audience for my boyfriend's graduation ceremony like... 4 years ish ago and they had a big screen on top of the stage showing all the grads with their names underneath and, this was before the ceremony started, I said what kind of stupid name is Miss Eplet? That's a stupid name. I'm Miss Eplet. I have a retarded name. And my friend and I laughed. Then when Miss Eplet crossed the stage the family right beside Emmy cheered for Missy. Oh. That's nice. Now, her name's first result on Google. It was high school, and I was talking with this guy I didn't know all that well, and the conversation shifted to a specific senior classmate, a very large white gangster wannabe. Anyway I had seen that person recently in some sort of gross McClearit session with what I believe I described as this ugly little freshman chick. He narrowed his eyes at me. That's my sister, comma freak. Not me but said by someone else. When I was about 18 I was standing with my friend behind a couple of teens, around 15-16, in a fast food queue which just happens to be in the middle of a shopping center. Unknown to us at the time my younger brother was on the above floor, same age as the teens. I heard the teen say, comma there's, my brother, let's go jump him, two against one. Friend and I looked at each other and gave a nod, I put my head in between them both. Slammed my hand down firmly on their shoulders and said, Comma that's my brother, why don't my friend and I join and make it three against two? Their blood drained from their faces and the walked off mutter sorry, only joking, etc. I hate chaps. Had a one nighter with one of the girls who lived across the hall from me and a few buddies. The next day I was in the kitchen telling one of the guys I lived with that I lost my watch across the hall, and that I could have paid for a H and it would have been cheaper. 
The next morning after another night out all three of us are sitting around in the living room nursing hangovers when there was a knock at the door. The girl who so graciously allowed me to have sexual relations with her came through the door and looks directly at me. She says I looked for your watch and I can't find it. Also you talk too freaking loud. She leaves and slams the door. The guys I lived with roared laughing and I never felt worse. I called every girl I knew and told them the story. I needed someone to tell me I wasn't as bad of a person as I felt. I am an idiot. Comma called every girl I knew. Probably not many if you're that big and butthole. When I was 17 I caught this girl trying to take the clothes off my passed out friend three times at a party. The next day I sent accidentally derpener is such a s to derpener. To which he replied, I know. I did a three message long rant to a friend about my mother once, and promptly sent it to my mother, whilst in the car with her, on the way back from a family trip, with another 50 miles remaining in the journey, worst hour of my life. You know, my name is Robert, and my best friend ditched me in gym in a similar fashion in the transition to 5th, 6th grade, and I extremely doubt you're talking to me, but in the off chance that you are, it's okay. I understand those decisions as a kid, and while I resented you for a while but eventually got over it, I hope your life is going well, we should hang out sometime. In college my apartment was about a block away from a convenience store, they had a sign next to the cash register that said we require a $10 minimum purchase to cash plasma alliance checks, plasma alliance being the blood plasma donating clinic down the street, my friend. I wonder why they have that requirement for cashing the checks, me, I guess it's to reduce the number of transients, that is, homeless, coming in just to get their cash. After paying for our stuff and heading out, the guy behind us steps up to the register and says, I'd like to cash one of these transient checks, please. But that is the real reason, you were just pointing out the fact of the matter. When I was a first year. I was ranting about this girl because of the way she talked and corrected people in class. Right after I finished her sentence, mimicking her condescending tone, she bumped past me, apparently having been right behind me, and started crying as she walked speedily past. Later we found out she'd been in the girl's bathroom all day crying because of it. She even missed our school's annual Halloween feast. Luckily, I saved her from the crushing violence of a mountain troll and we now have two kids. This isn't quite the same thing, but, in 2006 I worked as a consultant programmer with the Florida Department of Education. Once, while waiting for an elevator with two colleagues, we got started talking about no child left behind. One of them asked what the big deal was and why teachers were always bitching about it. My mom and sister both teach in public schools, so I've heard firsthand how fricked up it makes everything. So I launched into attack mode, decrying how teachers are forced to do test prep with students rather than teach them real skills, how it kills music, art, and pay instruction, how it funnels money away from failing schools, and so on. When I finished, a small, quiet woman I hadn't noticed behind me calmly began an obviously well used speech in defense of NCLB, explaining to my co-workers that I was wrong and it was all the teacher's fault for not buying into the program correctly. Turned out she was the enforcement executive for NCLB for the entire state of Florida, a Bush appointee, and someone who could have me fired simply by firing off an email. It was a quiet ride down to the first floor together. Seriously, though, frick that be. My senior year of college, we had a horrible finance professor. He sucked. By the time the final came up, the class average was a 40%. When prepping for the final someone asked, can we take the test as a group since we're all going to fail anyways? Professor, sure, if you all want to share the grade, as in 4 people group, each get max of 25%. Someone comments that with a partner, getting a 50% would still be better than they've been doing. If then our professor chimes in with this gem, yeah or you could try to find a midget and get 75%. There was dead silence. A couple weeks later, morning before the test, some guys in the class are still talking about this as they have been for days, joking about how we should blackmail him, repeating the line to all their friends in the library, etc. Kindly note that I hadn't mentioned or even really thought about this since the night that it happened. Then, not 15 minutes before the exam, we're sitting at a row of computers, 
cramming a few answers and my friend tells me, well I guess there's no point, we're gonna fail, clearly being sarcastic. I reply yeah, unless you want to go looking for a midget. It's around this point that I notice that my friend is looking at me with wide eyes, slowly shaking his head in horror. I turn around, and sure enough, right behind me, was the only little person on the entire campus, perhaps in the entire town around the campus. Yup, I'm in butt. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.